Welcome back. Now uh, in this video we're going to start looking at the back end of the website which is the admin section. Now um, I'll just show you what the finished product will look like. So that would be our home page there. When I click on the admin link it takes us to a page called admin and we get a username and password. If we get this wrong what this page will do, this will submit a request back onto the admin page and if it's incorrect it tells us and you notice we're staying on the admin page however if it is correct then this page successfully finds that user in our users table and it activates a, an administration session um, and it displays now our control panel so uh, we're just going to start getting this set up and set up the users table and stuff in this video so uh, let's go back to where we're actually up to, which is here. So um, again, just quickly, I'll just reinforce that. This is our proposed sitemap. So there's an awful lot to go still. We have done just the front end part on the left. We're now moving to the back end, which is the admin. And you notice there are going to be three pages we're going to create in this video. There's the admin page, which is like our shell for this login um, system. There's the actual login form itself and then the admin panel which will be displayed only when you successfully log in and all these other pages will be um, password protected as well okay. so uh, step one is to go back into phpMyAdmin and create a new table I'm going to call this table user and I'm going to have three columns if you want to do an email address for your users you might want to put a fourth one there uh, I'm just going to have a unique ID. Um, I'm just going to make it a length of one because I know there are very few users. This is my primary key and I'll set it to auto increment just in case I decided later on to have um, functionality for adding new users. Uh, the first thing, or the first field is going to be the username which is going to be Vacha and I'm just going to make a maximum of 20 characters for that. And then the password is the third field, also Vacha. I'm going to make that 50. Now it probably seems a little long, but we're going to be encrypting our password. So we need a little bit extra space for the, um, the long encrypted version. So I'll save that. Now um, I think we should just insert our first record into there. So I'm just going to open up the user table and at the top here just click insert. Um, I'm just going to have my username and password as being admin and admin. but hopefully you realize and you've, you've seen this before it's actually not a very good idea to store passwords in a database and in fact uh, you should probably never store uh, a password with a business that actually keeps your password they should only have an encrypted version of it they should not be able to tell you what your password is so that's why when you get those forgot password links um, they just send you a reactivation um, or a change password page where you can type a new one in they shouldn't actually tell you what your existing one is so rather than having it in the database, what we're going to do is we're going to go to another site to encrypt it. Now I'm actually going to use um, SHA-1 encryption, which is a reasonably robust one-way algorithm. Um, I'm going to go with a very simple password, which will be really, really easy to decrypt, but I'm going to go for admin, so my password and username are the same. Uh, so when I click on hash, it, assuming I'm still on mine, there we go, generates an encrypted version of my password. So I'm just going to copy that and go back to my database and paste that in. Right. So I'm going to add that user now and he should be now in my table. There we go. So now when we log in, uh, our, our, ta our um, login form should will submit the, um, the username that the person enters but what it will do is it will actually encrypt the password and send that to the database and look for a match. So uh, that's the setup of the, the table. The next step is to go back into Notepad and I'm just going to open up my template, which is in here, there. And I'm just going to save that as admin. Done. I'm also going to create two new PHP pages. So the first one I'm going to save as login.php and I'll probably need to change this. Okay. There we go, login. 
And the third page that we need is our control panel or admin panel. Doesn't really matter what you call it, just make sure you remember. And where are we? PHP. I'm going to call that admin panel. There we go. So we've got our three three files. Now uh, our login page is just going to um, contain a form. So i um, just put a really, really basic form in here to start with. Uh, so it'll be a form and what are we going to have here? We need the action. Um, it is going to actually submit itself to the admin page and the method we are going to use is post and of course we should be using post because we need to have a method that, of sending information that it does, is not visible in the URL whereas the get method obviously that was visible. Uh, within the form we're going to need I guess an input field for the username. Now I'm going to give it a name of username um, purely because uh, I want that to match the um, column heading in my database and then also need uh, one called password. Now we probably don't want the, um, the password to appear as people type it in so I'm actually going to say type equals password as well because that will encrypt that a little better and it occurs to me that we should probably put these in paragraphs so that they don't all run along one line and it also occurs to me we should probably put a label in front of them so we, can, when we're using this we actually know what we're doing there we go, username and password sorry about that and the final line is we need some form of button so input type equals uh, submit so there we go and you notice that the input fields are self closing they don't need the um, second closing tag like say the paragraph tag does so there's our login page so I'm just going to save that and our admin panel is really not going to have much at all. I'm just going to put a, a header in for the moment, um, admin panel. And uh, once we actually get the login stuff working, then we can uh, start working with that. Back on the admin page, though, what we need to do is we need to display the login form if we're not already logged in. So that's obviously what happens to start with. And we're going to use a thing called a session. And now, um, when you're running sessions, they are uh, really handy arrays that uh, they persist from page to page, unlike the get or the post methods, which only persist for one page transition. The session array will, will stick around as long as you need it. So you can destroy it when you don't want it, uh, and it will be destroyed when you close your browser. But as long as the browser is open, uh, the session is live, which is ideal for an admin thing. So we're going to start sessions running. We need to enable that at the start of any page that will be um, using anything to do with sessions. And what I'm going to do down here in my main content area, right there, is I'm just going to do a little check to see if the admin session has been set. Now obviously it won't have been yet because we haven't logged in. So there's a little bit of PHP here that's just going to say if and this is how you do a session, it's dollar sign underscore session or an uppercase. I'm going to call my session admin. Okay, and let's see, I made a mistake here, sorry, go back. Sorry, if is set, is not set, <laughs> sorry. So if this, the admin session is not set, like that, then what I'm going to do is include that page called login.php. like so, but otherwise else we're going to include the admin panel. Right. And then close the PHP down, there we go. So basically this is saying that if we're not logged in, that's what that exclamation mark and then the is set is going to basically check. So if this session is not running, in other words we're not logged in, we're going to be displaying the login form. Otherwise, in other words, we are logged in, we'll display the admin panel. So if we just save that and go back and test it now, here you go, you can see my username and password are coming up. All right. So that's the first step. And uh, I'm going to stop there because I don't want these videos to get too long. Um, 
What we'll do next time is we will do some coding at the top of this admin page to detect if the uh, login form has been submitted and if it has we're then going to run a query on our user table uh, to check and see if the username and password combination matches. If it does we will activate the admin session which will then display the admin panel. So uh, that's what's coming up. See you then.